stand. You don't have to stand, but thank God for all of the families that are here. <laughs> Praise God. And for this local body, which is the family of God, it's, it's very important to sow the word into the heart of family. You got to sow this word into the heart of family. That entire unit within your house have to observe and live by this word. And we as in the when we as individual families come together in the house of the Lord, the Bible says in Ephesians, we make up the whole and then every joint supply. How about that? Every joint supplies, praise God, when we are getting a hold of this word. But I want to look at reset uh, some more with us tonight. And I'm going to talk about reset from the perspective of resetting the standards of God's word in your life. We have to reset the standards. What the enemy wants us to do is to drop God's standards. But we're going to reset. We're going to look at those three areas that Pastor Riley dwelled on. But we got to look at resetting God's standards in our lives. When you reset God's standard, God's standards will steer you and guide you through everybody else's standards. Let his standard be priority. Keep him on the seat as we used to pray. We're going to get back to praying. He sits upon the seat. Amen? So he's, we got to set this standard, reset these standards. It's been a whole lot of distraction going on in their lives. My God, a whole lot of battles. But I see in the word of God in Psalm 34, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But God said, I deliver you out of all of them. We are not to be moved by affliction and persecution because God has already promised and already said he delivers us out of them all. So we're going to keep God's standard because he knows whatever we come up against, if we stay on his word and stand on his word, he is going to deliver us. Let's look at reset. One of the first things Pastor Riley shared on reset was to go back. Now, for the body of Christ, th that's not a new norm, okay? It's not a new norm, a new normal. We know there are some things that takes place, new things that happens that's good. But we got to know when something is good, when something is for us, and when it's not. So, you know, you can kind of take inventory and... and you know all the things we're talking about when we deal with this subject. We don't have to, you know, itemize or speak on anything in particular. But the new norm, as it goes today, is not the will of God for us. Our reset has to be going back to God. We got to get back on our faith. You know, when the pandemic and everything took place last year and, you know, the lockdown took place, can you imagine how many people got distracted by that? Got lazy behind that? Don't, didn't, don't want to go back to work behind that? I heard one person talking about, well, we knew it anyway. I mean, the movie channels and all, these things are skyrocketing. Because people want to sit home and watch movies all day. But we got to reset. We got to know that the purpose of the church and, the, and our purpose as children of God is to always stay connected to this word. We got to always, I'm not saying that we be in the word all day long, but then you can't be on that cell phone and on that internet all day long either. Even for the purpose of work, if you work from home, you should take breaks. You had a lunch break when you went to work, didn't you? You should still have one. But you need to take a break and give God his time. We got to always keep, listen, if you want to hear from God, then we have to give him his place in our lives. So this reset, listen to, listen to, uh, go to Revelations with me. Listen to Revelations 2 and 4. Revelations 2 and 4 says, 
Nevertheless, I have somewhat against you because you have left your first love. He says, you have left. Many, many believers have left your first love toward God. That's, that's why it's hard to get up out of that house and come back to church. It's not rules and regulations and restrictions. You just lost your first love because you go everywhere else, but you won't come to church. God says you have lost your first love. And there's no way to justify that. You're not trying to protect anybody because you go everywhere else. You go to your job, <laughs> but you lost your love for God, so you won't come to his job. You won't come to his house. So we got to reset that. We got to reset that. Now, some of you might be listening you know, online or whatever, and you're in certain situations, and that's what you have to do. We understand that. But we are seriously preaching this word because the enemy, like Pastor Riley has been teaching, the enemy just wants to shut the church up. He wants you to stop saying what God says about you and say what everybody else is saying. When you start doing that, you're out of faith. You need to reset. Because God never called the believer or told the believer to get in agreement with the world. I don't care what's going on. He never called us to live that way. He never told us to say what the enemy is saying about us. He said, I've given you authority over him. So say what I say. But believers are all, you know, I mean, they're just all out of whack. <laughs> I can't think of no better word. You're just all out of whack. <laughs> Why? Because we have lost our first love. And let me tell you something. When you get back in that place of honoring God right, oh, my God, let me tell you something. When his presence come upon you, you're not going to want to leave that place of his presence. Because there's nothing like being in the presence of God, hearing him talk to you, knowing he's giving you the right directions. Knowing he's giving you the right instructions and you know it's God. It's, it's nothing like being in God's presence just praising him. Because he said praise is comely for the upright. So that's what we're supposed to be doing. We can't leave our first love. Let me just give you an example because, you know, sometimes we like to, to act like we have graduated. You haven't graduated. Think about how you loved God when you first got born again. Think about how you loved God when you first joined this ministry. You were so happy. Sometimes we just got to reset ourselves. Sometimes we got to just reset our attitude. That's all. We got to go back to our first love. And the Lord spoke this to my heart to share with you, too. We just can't wait until, you know, a great conference or some other great man of God. How many of you know we got a great man of God in this house? <laughs> I would clap on that. I'm so glad, you know, there was a scripture in the book of Acts where they, uh, some of the disciples said, you know, we send the Macedonia, you know, because uh, we need help. Come and help us over here. And that's good. And, and I love Pastor Riley's heart and spirit wherein God will use him to bring people in to share and add to certain areas of the Bible that he's teaching on and so forth. But you just got to know when you got a great man of God in your own house. So we got to get a hold of this word and we got to get back to our first love. Somebody say, I'm going back to my first love. So that's the first reset. That's the first thing about reset we got to look at. We got to go back. Now, you know, just check yourself out while we're teaching. Just check, you know, take inventory. Lord, is there any area in my life that I've just really kind of slacked off? Because we're not living in the days where we can afford to slack off. You're not going to get closer to God by drawing back. So we got to get back into that place of being on fire. <laughs> being on fire. Believers are supposed to be on fire. 
You know, when Jesus, the first time Jesus mentioned the Holy Ghost, he said, I'm going, you will be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. I never seen nobody sit still with fire. <laughs> you put fire behind anything and it makes you move. God is trying to tell you what type of life and attitude we're supposed to have. We're supposed to have that attitude that's vibrant and full of faith on fire for God. And if you get that way, talking to us as parents now, our whole household will be that way. Because that's the way God said. He said, be full of the Holy Ghost. Be filled to overflowing. He said, I'm going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. My God, that's going all the way under. <laughs> Are y'all hearing me tonight? He wants you to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, full of the Holy Ghost and power. Now, when we get that way, and when we get back to our first love, when we get that reset, my God, I'm telling you, you're going to begin to see powerful things. Let's look at another scripture. So somebody say reset. reset. Means to go back to our first love. Man, you love God so much one time, nobody could keep you out the house of God. I remember years ago we had employees, we had to send them home. They just love God and love their work. I remember people would, would call Pastor Rodney and say, man, you know that person that came and I hired them, they're from your church, they're the best workers I have. Because you work as unto the Lord when you love God and when you're on fire. We got to get back to our first love so that we can begin to demonstrate the church we see in the book of Acts. And not try to demonstrate the church that the university is trying to create. The university didn't write the Bible. The Holy Spirit wrote the Bible. So when God wrote the Bible, he knew he was going to have a lively church. He knew he put Hebrews 10 and 25 in there that we are uh, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. He knew he was going to put in there walk by faith and not by sight. But that's the church he wanted. And that's what he considers intelligent, living by his word. Amen? Amen. So we got to get back to our first love. We got, this is the reset God wants the body of Christ to, go to, uh, to get to. This is where God wants us to go back to. Malachi 3 and 7 says, Even from the days of your fathers you have gone away from mine ordinance and have not kept them, but this is the part I want to get to. He says, return to me and I'll return to you. God said, return to me and I will return to you. There's no reason why every believer can't walk in victory. If you return to God, he said, I will return to you. And there is nothing in your life that can overcome you when you return to him. He says, return to me and I will return to you, saith the Lord of hosts. But the church sitting back asking the question, where shall we return? Why we got to go back to church? <laughs> you know, you, when you sit at home, you don't even pray in the Holy Ghost. The way this Bible says we should. The, the Bible said in the book of Acts, they prayed in the Holy Ghost. And now this prayer on Monday, I, I, I pray, Pastor, opens this up, open, opening up to everybody. We don't know yet. Guess we'll find out Sunday. <laughs> But I know last Sunday he mentioned praying with the men. We'll see. Because I told him I'm going to be in a back room somewhere anyway. <laughs> but in the book of Acts, they prayed in the Holy Ghost until the Bible says the, the, uh, the house shook. The house where they were assembled shook. That sounds like a people that's on fire to me. And that's where God wants to get you to. God wants to get you to the place that you are fully persuaded that he is able to deliver you from anything. I'm going to say that again. God wants you to get to the place where you are fully persuaded. Somebody say fully persuaded. Fully persuaded, fully persuaded means there is no doubt mixed in there. The Bible tells us over there in the book of Romans that when Abraham got a hold of the revelation, 
When Abraham got a hold of a revelation of this thing, he said, man, I ain't considering my body. Let them say what they want to say. I'm Abraham. I'm the father of all. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to be the father of all y'all. You start talking boldly. Oh, I'm healed. COVID can't touch me. You start talking like that. When you walk in the power of your God. I'm talking about your God who saved you. Come on, let's reset. Get back to the place we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be the ones out there. Uh, I think it's Psalm 34 says, uh, let's go there for just a moment. I think I'm going to go here, right? It says, I will bless the Lord at all time. Well, don't bother. <laughs> it, says, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Somebody is supposed to hear you boasting in the Lord and get glad about it. They're supposed to hear you boasting in the Lord, not sitting home talking about, I'm not even going there. <laughs> Stop saying all that. Let's start saying what God has said. So we can get some fire up in our house. We can get some fire up on us. And the fire that's up on you will get on somebody else. Because listen, either our God can do it or he can't. But when I check my Bible, he said he can. And if he couldn't do it, he shouldn't have said so. So I'm going to say what he has said. And then I'm going to step back and watch him do it. That's a believer. That's a believer. Let's get back to saying what God has said. Leave it up to him to do it. He never said you had to do it, but he did say you have to say it if you want to see it. Man, I ain't going nowhere. I wish I knew how to talk like how y'all be talking sometimes. Say it for me. I ain't going nowhere. Okay. You just need to talk like that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't need, see, we, we're not supposed to be moved. I hope y'all getting this tonight. I just came to encourage you. Could y'all stand a little bit of encouragement? Yeah. Amen. Are we on the Lord's side? Yeah. I said, are we on the Lord's side? Can we just sound for a moment like we on the Lord's side? You know, Muhammad Ali used to get in the ring, don't know the person he's fighting from, Adam's house cat, that's just the terminology, but he would step in that ring saying, you know, I'm going, what? Yeah, say it again. I'm afloat. He said, I'm going to float today. I'm going to sting somebody. Today. That's how we're supposed to be talking. We're believers. We're believers. And you know what? Every time he talked like that, he took them down. We can't take, well, let's get, let's, let's get back in the word. What, a, <laughs> what about David? A giant had to be about five or six times his size and height. David went before the, the giant saying, I'm going to take you down today. Who are you? Who are you, you uncircumcised Philistine? Who are you, COVID, you uncircumcised Philistine? You're nothing but a defeated germ. That's how you need to talk. Get out of here. Get out of my house. That's believers. Believers are bold. The Bible says they that know their God. They that know that God. I wonder, do you know God tonight? I said, do you know God tonight? Let's start acting like we know him. Start talking like him. When you know him, you will boast like David did. Now, if you don't know him, we're going to get to another word that you might need to do. But that's all right. We still love you. Just repent. Just say, I've been faking. I've been sitting in church faking. Look, repent. But we got to get this thing right. God never called believers to hide up under a bushel somewhere. And if you have to hide your, if you have to hide 
your God, and if you have to hide who you are upon a book, you might want to consider letting God give you another job where they deserve you. If they can't handle who you are in Christ, they don't deserve you. We have a wrong relationship with the world. And a lot of times we have a wrong knowledge of who we are. We're supposed to boast like Muhammad Ali boast. We're supposed to boast like David boast. But you're only going to do it when you know your God. You're only going to say God did this for me. And don't care who know it when you know your God. Let's reset. Come on, sit at the night. Say, let's reset. Come on, pump it one time. Say, I'm going to reset. Oh, put your hand up and pump it. Say, I'm going to reset. I'm going to reset. See, because when you get ready to do this thing God's way, God said, I'll turn you into another man and another woman. They'll have to stand back and say, who is that? But people benefit of the power of God upon your life when you let them see it. The Bible says no man takes a candle and put it under a bushel. What are we hiding for? We've got the power. We've got the power to set people free. I'm not going to compromise with you. COVID is defeated. The word of God says whatsoever is born of God overcomes. How many of you are born of God tonight? I said, how many of you are really born of God tonight? Then you have already overcome this world. You've already overcome. So let's begin to act like a bunch of Jesus-loving people. Victorious people. Victorious people who know their God. See, that's what I'm going to reset to. That's where I'm going. That's what I'm going to reset to. Oh, COVID, you, you, you want to mess with this? Uh-uh. No, you didn't. You know how you did when, before you got ready to fight. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Come on, this is for real, though. COVID want to mess with this? You want to mess with my church? You want to mess with my sister, with my brother? Some of y'all need to team up on that devil. Pastors, stop telling people, I understand. Say, so, child, come on, let's, 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 let's kill this devil today. Raka shoto barabaka, nanda rabaka. Lay hands on them and pray in the Holy Ghost until they get free. Either we are for Christ or we are not. And when you're for Christ, you got to stop trying to be who you are and let him be who the Holy Ghost has created you to be. He said, I'll turn you into a whole nother person. Why? Because now my power is operating on the inside of you. I'll give you the ability to do those things that you never thought you can do. I'll give you the ability to stand in places that you never could stand on your own education, on your own knowledge, on your own strength. Why? Because God has called us to take dominion. And he knew that we couldn't take it with our own strength. He knew we couldn't take it in our own selves, in our own knowledge. So he left. Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you confidence. I'm going to leave you the same power I had. God has given the church power, and he wants us to take over. Listen, somebody's got to do it. It may as well be the one who God called to do it, the church. I said, are you the church tonight? Then let's take over for God. I agree with that, honey. Glory to God. Let's take over for him. Amen. So either you're going to walk in his ability or you're going to continue to try to walk in your own. His ability is much greater than ours. So let's return to our first love, Revelations 2 and 4. Malachi 3 and 7, he says, if you return to me, guess what? I'm going to return to you. And then let's go to James, the fourth chapter and the seventh verse. Are you getting something tonight? Are you getting stirred up tonight? 
Or are we going to defeat some devils in Jesus' name? And we ain't going to do it sad either. We're going to do it glad. <laughs> We're going to do it with the word. James 4 and 7. It reads like this. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, not God. <laughs> Stop resisting God. Resist the devil. And then he'll flee. Why the devil still bothering some of you? Because you haven't resisted him. Resist him and he'll flee. Don't agree with him. Don't compromise with him. He ain't going to flee like that. When he starts coming, trying to mess with you, bother you, speak to your mind, late in the midnight hour, you get up and start praying in tongue and speak this word. Resist him. And he will flee from you and another spirit will come on you. Resist him. And he'll flee. Now, when you do that, then it says you can draw nigh to God. You can't draw nigh to God until you resist the devil. Tell him, look, get off of me. I don't want to hear from you. Turn the news off. Turn some people off. <laughs> Turn that Facebook off. Stop trying to get so many likes. Get God to like you. Because if you get him to like you, let me tell you something. He can draw anybody to you that needs to be drawn. And then he'll keep the one away from you that you don't need to bother with. So I just go for the goal. <laughs> I go for God. God, I want to I wanna know you. Because once I know you, whoever I need to know, you'll get them to me. Stop trying to be liked by everybody. Because when you try to be liked by everybody, you won't be used by God. Because you'll find yourself trying to compromise to please people. I'm going to say that again. I believe God is on that. <laughs> Please, let's stop trying to be liked by everybody. That's over. They don't like you. Let me just solve that tonight. And it's because of the presence of God in you that they don't understand. The Bible says in Corinthians, their minds are blinded by darkness. They see differently than you see because you are in the light. So stop, stop trying to compromise with people. Let, let God be God in you. And then God will cause them, hear this, God will cause them to respect you even though they don't like you. But you try to get them to like you, you're going to compromise. Then you're going to miss out with God. Sometimes they'll persecute you only for a season because of something, I'm speaking prophetically now, because there's something on the inside of you that they need. So you have to stand, stand the test, stand the criticism, stand the persecution, because after a while, they're going to come to you for you to minister to them. Don't take down. Let's reset and let's do this thing right. <laughs> How about that, everybody? Okay, so James says, let's draw nigh to God. It's time to draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Child of God is nothing like having the most high God draw nigh to you. Because there's no question about it. You know when he's nigh and you know when he's not. So draw nigh, let him draw nigh to you so that you can become fully persuaded and now he could use you. He could use you to be a light in this dark world because you're fully persuaded. Listen, the, the, the period, this time that the church is in now, this is the time for people who really know who they are in God. This is who God is really looking for. Now, everybody else, it, it kind of reminds me of, uh, I think it was David. Some of his men wasn't ready. He had to leave them behind. He had to go get the spoil with those who knew their God and those that were on one accord. Well, what about, uh, what's his name that, that, that had the 22,000? I don't know why I keep forgetting his name. Gideon. He had to go with 300 also? But see, this whole city will benefit with 300 people on one accord than a whole bunch of people that don't know who they are and don't know who God is or don't know what he is saying. That's why it's so very important for us right now to reset. 
and to do it according to this word. Come on, we have to draw nigh to God. He will draw nigh to us. It says, cleanse your hands if you're sinners and purify your heart. And then you double-minded. Book of James talk about that double-minded person. If you're double-minded, uh, praise God, become single-minded. It says, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning. And, and I, I put this down to go with what I said earlier. A lot of people, they're at home, they ain't praying. They're watching Netflix. But the Bible just said, let your laughter be turned to mourning. Go before God and seek God. See, if they were praying, he would have already given them the strength that they need. No, they're enjoying this year's vacation. Who takes a vacation for a year? I was ready to get out that house after two weeks, like they said we would. I'm not trying to be on lockdown forever. We got people that has to be reached. And furthermore, I can't grow, on, I can't grow in God being on lockdown because the word of God told me to come and assemble in God's presence. I got to have that. That's how believers think. But they, they weren't, uh, their laughters weren't turned into mourning because they weren't seeking God. And if they were seeking God, they would have heard from God or they would have known when somebody heard from God because God is one spirit. So the, the, the objective of the enemy was to weaken the church. You sit at home, your laughter is not turned into mourning and your joy into heaviness. He says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord so that he can lift you up. Many of people at home, you should have been out of that situation. But if we are not going before God's presence in prayer, if we are not returning, you know, in times like these, we're not supposed to fall away from what we've been taught. That's when you put it to work. I think pastor said it like this. You've been training, doing all of these routines and stuff and, you know, boot camp training and all that. When you go to war, you don't hide and stay home. You were trained for battle. You were trained to fight. Get those scriptures out and fight. Get that word out and fight. Get those tape series out and fight. So that when somebody call you, how you doing? Oh, child, I'm the, uh, the, 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 I was the devil's worst enemy today. He was, I mean, he was sad that I got out of bed. Because as soon as I got up, I started working on his tail with the word. I started beating his behind, left and right. Oh, honey, joy up in this house. <laughs> Ooh, the joy of the Lord's up in this house. But we call you, oh, you in the house with a mask on. You go to sleep with a mask on. Not supposed to be that fearful. That's the devil. Of course you're going to wake up in the next land, because if you're sleeping with a mask on, you probably ain't breathing so good. <laughs> I don't know about that. We got some medical people in here now, so they might can help you with that. That's not God. But we can't get out of those situations if we don't fight with this word. Every member in this church, pastor has taught for years. We have had faith conference. Haven't we had it? Yeah. We've had healing. You got everything you need to fight with. Yeah, I would clap on that. We've got everything we need to fight with. Let's get some more scriptures. I'm going to do James again in the Amplified. It says, so be subject to God. You got to be subject to God. Resist the devil and stand firm against him. As a believer, resist the devil and stand firm against him. And he will flee. That's the word of God. Oh, he will flee. Come close to God. I love that part. This is what we want the believers to reset to. Let's come close to God. Let's get back in that place with God where and when we get in here and pray and worship, my God, you just stretched out on the floor. 
or sitting down in the chairs, which you just is you 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 just can't almost can't come out of that place. You know like how sometimes pastors say, "Sit down if you can." When have you experienced that? And it was really God. Sit down if you can, because you've come close to Him. See, God wants us to be hungry for Him like that again. Get hungry for God. Oh, my God. And the scripture says he will come close to you. The second thing I want to share with you, so we've got to reset or go back. Let's go back to these experiences with God and then let it increase. Man, I'm telling you, you wake up in the morning and give God that time. You'll want, because see, the presence of God wants to come upon you to give you divine strength. To do what you call to do. You can't go. Uh, this is, we read a scripture today when we were on Word Talk. Mm, let me see if I still have it in here. That talk, I think it's, it, it is uh, Matthew as a matter of fact, the fourth chapter. But it's this, yes, yeah, still have it. It says, Jesus, this is Matthew 4 and 4 from the Message Bible. It says, Jesus said and said unto them, quoting from Deuteronomy, it takes more than bread for you to stay alive. It takes more than bread for you to stay alive. He said it takes a steady, somebody say steady, stream, somebody say stream, of the word of God. A steady stream of the word from the mouth of God. That's what God said it takes to keep me alive. And when I get in God's presence early in the morning, I start worshiping God. Let me tell you, the unction of the Holy Ghost and the power of the Holy Ghost will come upon you and you can do 10 times more in a day than you could do if you try to do it in your own knowledge and your own strength. That's the believer's benefit. That's the believer's benefit. See, God wants to give you wisdom because man's wisdom is limited. And what he has called you to do for his glory takes his wisdom. You can't get it if you don't love him. Because if you love him, you, you want to be with him. You want to be in his presence. So we just can't eat bread only. Somebody say amen. And then Matthew 4 and 4 says it like this. He said it has been written, man shall not live and be upheld and sustained by bread or natural bread alone. Natural food alone can't sustain us and uphold us. Cannot do it. He says, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. This is what God wants you to, wants you to use to be sustained. You have to realize this is your responsibility. You get this word when you come here, you go home and you work the word. So to, we've got to reset and go back to that place in our lives where God has quality time. Everybody else got qu quality time from you. Matter of fact, some people get overtime. They get overtime. And we'll work ourselves, as the world says, to death. On the natural side. But we don't give, that, give God the quality time wherein when we spend time in his presence, he gives us life. <laughs> he doesn't want you to wear yourself out. Because everything in this world is going to pass away. You can't take it with you. So give God quality time so that you can be able to fulfill your purpose that he's placed you here for, but with a knowing and a revelation and a resolution that I live for God. I don't live for the job. <laughs> I live for God. God is first and then that which he has called me to do. Because when it's all said and done, he's going he's to say, well done, because he knows me and I have fulfilled his purpose. Not because I fulfilled his purpose and I said, oh, um, oh yeah, really? No, I've seen in Matthew, I think, the seven, he says, depart from me, I don't know you. And he wasn't talking to unbelievers. <laughs> he was talking to people that were supposed to know him. So come on, let's reset. I think we got that. Second thing, almost done. 
that we talked about. And like I said, if we set these things in place, if we set these priorities, we're going to see a difference in our homes. Because, you know, even during this time, I thought about last year, how many young people were affected. You know, they, they, don't, they, don't, they didn't put a lot of this on the news and so forth. But then there were certain reports that were talking about young people that were committing suicide because of the lockdown and depression and all these things. Y'all know it's true because some of you heard of these things. But if we would, if, 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 if many people were in the place where they were in that reset and they were being fueled from the, 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 the right place and from the, the right authority, then in many of those cases it could, be avo it could have been avoided. So reset number two, let's repent. We got to repent. Look at Revelations 2 and 5. We're almost done. Somebody said, I'm going to reset. I don't know about you, but I want more and more of God. So let's reset by repenting. Revelations 2 and 5 says, remember, therefore, from whence you are fallen. Think about from where you have fallen, he says, and repent. Now, repent isn't a bad word. Matthew 4 and 16 says, repent means, the amplified version, to change your mind for the better. It means to change your mind for the better. Repent doesn't always mean you have done a bad, evil, demonic sin. <laughs> but the word is still necessary for you to go to the next level. He says, repent. Change your mind for the better. Consider yourself. Consider from where you have fallen and repent. Well, like the book of Malachi, some of us like to say, Lord, have I fallen? <laughs> what? Where? Who? Me? No, God wants the entire body of Christ to consider this scripture. Consider from where you have fallen. What has caused you to fall away? And repent. Change your mind for the better. Change your mind for the better and come back to God. He says, heartily amend your ways. In other words, amend your ways with all of your heart. Put your heart in what you do for God. You know, some of us, we've been saved for a while. We shouldn't have to, you know, be lassoed to come to church. We pulled in. But the scripture just said, draw closer to God. So if I'm drawing closer to God, that means I'm increasing. I'm not decreasing. We've got to consider these things. Consider from where we have fallen and then repent. Then the last thing I want to talk about is resetting your faith in God. Reset your faith in God. When we reset our faith in God, we'll go back to God and go back to faith in God. Faith in God has to be developed like everything else. Faith in God takes place because you practice faith. Not because you got it in a low frame <laughs> over your fireplace. Faith. You know, we have them cute little pictures. Faith. And all it's supposed to be in you and it's supposed to be working. You got to exercise faith. James, the second chapter said, faith without works. How many went to elementary? One plus one equals, somebody said three. <laughs> no, faith plus work equals manifestation. So let's get back to exercise and faith. Once again, get that word. And let me show you some things that we need to do. This was an excellent word. I sat over there last Wednesday while pastor was teaching this word. And I said, man, we're just getting what we need to hear for the time. You got to know when God has given you an accurate word for the time and don't miss it. Because this word that he taught Winston, I didn't deviate from it because it was such an accurate word for the time. And when God speaks, you got to know how to lay a hold. Because this word is for now. This is not something that, oh, I'm write my notes and I'll read it later. No, you got to get this now. So watch some things we got to do and we're almost done. It says, 
If we're going to reset our faith in God, then we have to go back to God and go back to faith. And here are some things. Read your word daily. Read your word daily purposefully. Sometimes I read the word and I have, you know, maybe some music playing. And sometimes I just touch my phone or touch the button and cut it off. Because, I think Pastor made this statement too, but tonight is mine. So <laughs> it's my revelation tonight. Guess what? The word is God himself talking to you. Now, if you're reading your word and you don't feel God, you ain't read it yet. Because the word is not supposed to be a Bible story or fiction. It's supposed to become rhema. I hear God talking to me through this scripture. And like pastor said, sometimes you have to stay there and look at it. You can't move. You feel a warm feeling come all over your body, and then you feel that tear just want to kind of trickle out the corner of your eyes. That's when God is talking to you through his word. That's what it means to read his word. He said in Revelations 3 and 20, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in and I'll sup with you. Have anybody ever come to dinner with you and sat there all the, the whole time and didn't talk? That's not fellowship. That's not supping with you. God wants to speak to you through his word. That's why he left it. That's why he wrote it. The Bible says every word <laughs> is God-breathed, is inspired by God, and it was written for your correction, for your instruction, so that the Man and a woman of God can be thoroughly furnished for all good work. God wants to talk to you. But you got to get in a place where you could hear. Because when you get in a place and this word start talking to you, you'll stop debating and you'll start receiving. Now, read your word. Then confess it. Joshua 1 and 8 says, this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth. Meditate in it. The word meditate. I think it's lecha. We call hega. That's the meditation. That's the Hebrew word for keeping it here. Lecha is the Hebrew word that says talk. And when you look in the Hebrew scripture, lecha is the word that's, that's that. Uh, word uh, meditation is translated into. So God says, this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth, but thou shalt talk it. He says, thou shalt talk it day and night so that you can observe to do it. For he that heareth only, he that is a hearer only and not a doer, you deceive in yourself. You deceive in yourself. Speak the word to do it. And God said, you will become a success. Because I believe in everybody's life, the devil will set you up to break you. That's why the world never make it. Like the scripture pastor reads to us sometime that says, when I considered the end of the ungodly, I wasn't jealous of them no more. I don't want that in. Because you get to a certain point in your life, you can't do this without a higher knowledge. You can't do this without the mind of someone who is greater than you. You get to a place in your life where your skill can't get it no more. People you know can't get it no more. It's got to be somebody that's working on the inside of you to give you the peace that passes all understanding. A million dollar can't do that. A million likes on Facebook can't do that. But knowing God, that's what does it. You got to know him. Go for God. So this book of the Lord shall not depart from out of your mouth. But you shall meditate in it day and night that you might observe. You shall speak it day and night that you can, shall observe to do it. For then you will make your way prosperous. And then 
you have good success. This is the will of the Father for you. So confess it every day. The third thing you do to reset your faith back in the Word of God is we pray in the Holy Ghost. How many believers in here tonight pray in the Holy Ghost? Lift your hands. See, sometimes we become too advanced. We promote it. I don't do that. No, are you kidding? That's where the power is. When you pray in the Holy Ghost and you get through, you need to grab an ink pen because God's going to give you some instructions and some directions and probably some corrections. But God's going to talk to you when you pray in the Holy Ghost. God will show you who is trying to set you up. Or what the enemy is trying to do against you, God will show it to you. Because he said he reserved this wisdom for the believers. Read your Bible. <laughs> First Corinthians, the second chapter. He reserved this great gift for us, and we won't take an hour. If you're a business person, you should pray in the Holy Ghost at least an hour. Because you've got a big responsibility. You need a lot of God's wisdom. His wisdom is above the books. So let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Because that's where you pray, not something, you pray everything. Because spirit is praying with spirit. Spirit is a whole nother dimension. That's why God said, pray, I'm, you know, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. <laughs> pray in the Holy Ghost. And then, last but not least, read this word to your children if you have children in your house and pray in the Holy Ghost with your children. Because I'm not saying this to scare you, but the devil is out. The devil is out to defeat the younger generation. He's out to get them. He want to cut them off at the knees. Why do you think when this guy put this Sneakers or something out? Satan? Those things sold out like that. <laughs> so the enemy is after the young, the youth, the young generation. Now, one thing that we did when our kids were small, I mean, to them it was kind of fun, and they were, especially when they were real little, they would walk all the way down the halls and stuff. But bedtime, let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Get all those evil spirits up out your house. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Oh, Pastor, that ain't no evil spirit in my house. Some of those cartoons they watch is laced. So you pray in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost takes care of all that stuff. We have to teach our children the defense of this word. Check with them sometime. Are you reading your Bible? You know, are you praying in the Holy Ghost? If they miss it in some area, teach them how to repent quickly. I would tell my children, you didn't sin against me, sweetheart. You sinned against God. You better hurry up and repent. Because I'll spank you behind, but the Bible says he is the only one that's able to save a soul or cast a soul in hell. That ain't my jurisdiction. That's his. You didn't sin against me. We taught them early. Repent quick. Repent quickly. Do your kids know how to do that? Do your kids know how to speak the word? I remember when Thomas was just in kindergarten. Um, and there was this little guy in school. He was very quiet, stood in the corner. And Thomas went to the boy. Of course, Thomas, Thomas is very, very outgoing. So he went, and the teacher saw him over there, <laughs> and he laid hands on the little guy, wanted to know what's wrong with you, you know, that type stuff, and asked him if he knew you, pull him out the corner, took him to the teacher. And from then on, the little guy began to socialize with everybody. So he got this little blue ribbon sent home. I said, what's this for? Looked at the note. She said, Thomas got caught being good today. We could, none of us could get this little guy to open up. Thomas comes to me and told me he prayed for him, and led him to the Lord. Where did he get that from? I only got five more minutes. But I'm going to ask the question, where did he get that from? He didn't get it off of internet. Parents, we got we to gotta demonstrate these things. We got to show our kids. How, if you show your kids how to do stuff like that, they'll go and do it. 
Because kids do what they see their parents do. Show them that. Because they need that now more than ever. I'm going to close with one scripture. Oh, one more thing. Can't leave this out. So read the word with your children, please. The Bible says in Proverbs 29 to 15, a child that's left to himself will make his mother ashamed. Don't leave your children to themselves. If they're living in, the, in, the, in your house, they could be young adults. You, might, you need to check with them ever so often. You, you're doing scriptures in the mornings? When I do it, I smile because, see, my, mine are all grown now. You praying? <laughs> are you praying? Are you reading the scriptures? Because we want to remind them to do those things that help them. Listen, this got you to where you are. What makes you think we're going to let you stop? So it's our responsibility to keep our house in reset. A child left to himself will make, uh, bring his mother to shame. Last but not least, keep sowing in faith. Man, when stuff gets too tough for me, when I can't figure it out, I get a seed. When a battle is before me and an enemy looks like he's going to try to win or I don't know exactly how to win, I get a seed. This has been a principle for our lives forever. And what we have to be careful of, don't work something and get a result and then stop. Because if it worked for you last year, it's going to work for you this year also. And then if everything is going hunkadory, anybody know what that word means? Oh, y'all tired now. Y'all ain't even responding. If everything's going good, listen, if everything is going great, then just get a seed and honor God. Never stop sowing. Sowing is honor. Sowing is a way to get God's attention. Simply just to let him know, God, even where I am now, I know I didn't get here by myself. I know you did it. So keep sowing and then look for opportunities to be a blessing. That's the life of the believer. And you can put your hands together and give God praise because I'm done. <laughs> Did y'all enjoy that? Did you get something? I mean, did you get a little bit more fire? Can we show God? I don't want you to clap for me. I want you to clap for God. If he stirred a fire on the inside of you, come on, let's go for it. Come on, we're going to go for it. Somebody shout that, say, I'm going to go for it. Praise God. Pastor Raleigh, you coming or you want me to receive the offer? Okay, let's sit down and let's make preparations to So tonight. We're going to honor God. I really do pray that you got something out of that. I pray that you're encouraged because we are the body of Christ. And you've got to come to a resolution. Resolution means that I resolve something. I finalize something in my life. I don't care what the devil does. I'm not going to quit. God has been too good for me, good to me. You know, when I didn't have nothing, I served God. When he got me to where I could, was up on my feet, I served God. What makes you think when he manifests millions, I'm going to stop serving him? Not so. God's been too good to me. I have proven in my life that this word works. And we got to be careful that we do not get to the place that when we get kind of comfortable, we forget the principles that worked for us. That got God's attention. That showed God our hearts. Lord, this seed that I'm sowing, <laughs> I just want you to know that I worship you. I just want you to know I love you. Some of you took a seed when you know it was faith. Your knees were shaking, but you knew it was God. Don't forget those times. Don't let the enemy steal those experiences from you. Because if I did that then and I, then and I saw God, then I know I can do it again. Prepare your tithes and offering tonight, and I want you to honor God and give to the most high God. Because that's who he is.
sow a seed so that it demands a reset. Now, some of you might say, well, Pastor Renata, I don't really need to reset. Well, sow a seed to go to the higher level. Because as long as we are on earth, we have not experienced all of him. He wants us to go from faith to faith and to, from glory to glory until we get up out of here. And that's what I'm going to do. I want to say one more thing. Never let your giving decrease. Keep it on a level. And then press higher. Because if you can press higher, you will go higher. Now, this is for no offense, but spare me from people that want, God's to, want God to pour on all these blessings. But you can't give something that costs you something. It doesn't work that way. So keep your giving on the level and remember to always honor God when you give. If you're ready, you can stand on your feet. Stand on your happy feet. How many of you got happy feet tonight? <laughs> Praise God. And you can go ahead and bring those tithes and offerings to this altar and release it. We decree and declare that it's being multiplied and it's coming back to you a hundredfold. Come on, just stand and worship him after you release that seed. The reset is happening. A reset, I receive it in Jesus' name. A reset is taking place in your life. Reset is taking place in your family. In the name of Jesus. There's nobody like him. Nobody like him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. I receive it in Jesus' name. Come on, just lift your hands and worship him. Praise your Lord Jesus. Praise your Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for the reset. We thank you tonight, Father. We thank you for the power of God upon our lives like never before. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for our man of God. And we thank you because we're getting back to the place of resetting our faith in God. We reset our faith in God. And we're going to see the results that your word promised. For the Bible says you are faithful. Faithful is he that promised. He is faithful tonight. So let's stand on his word. Faithful is he that promised. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, one more time, put your hands together, and let's thank God for our man of God, Pastor Thomas Riley. Amen. Are y'all praying for your pastor? Are y'all praying for your church? Amen.